So you want to start making professional looking videos, but you don't know what to look for in a camera, nor do you have a big budget. In this video, I'm going to share my top five camera features to consider when you're buying your starter camera. My name is Kevin Mendoza, and I help business owners and entrepreneurs utilize video so they can build their online brands and create business opportunities. So if you're looking to use video for your marketing, consider subscribing for more tips and tutorials just like this one. Now, before I get started with my top five camera features, the first thing I want you to do is decide on your budget. How much are you willing to spend or invest, depending on your usage, on a new camera? This number is completely up to you, but in my experience, you're probably going to get the most bang for your buck if you spend no less than $500 new. Now you may be able to find some deals on eBay or Facebook Marketplace for used cameras that fall under that $500 price point, but just keep in mind, you are buying used products. Not saying they're in bad condition, just saying they're used. Towards the end of this video, I will share my top recommendation for a budget-friendly beginner camera that I still use today on professional shoots, so make sure you stick around for that. So without any further delay, here are my top five camera features to consider when buying a new beginner camera. Number one, a maximum resolution of at least 1080p. While 4K does look better, you can get away with 1080p for most shoots. 1080p is also known as Full HD, and it comes native to most monitors and displays anyway. Now, I say a maximum resolution of at least 1080p because you're probably going to get the most affordable cameras if the camera doesn't shoot 4K. Number two, fast and accurate touchscreen autofocus. I mean, autofocus wouldn't be of much use if it was too slow or if it missed focus all of the time. And I personally like touchscreen autofocus because you could set focus to whatever you want in the frame simply by touching on the screen. Number three, a maximum recording frame rate of at least 60 frames per second. Recording at higher frame rates gives you smoother real-time playback and it gives you the option to slow down that footage in post while maintaining its natural motion blur so you get some really epic and smooth slow motion. Slow motion footage just looks amazing on its own and it can really add perceived production value to your videos. Number four, an adjustable screen. An adjustable screen is super convenient because instead of having to maneuver your face around the camera at certain angles, you can just flip the screen out and adjust accordingly to whatever you're shooting. And lastly, number five, battery life. Battery life is obviously important because you at least want to have the option to film without the interruption of having to swap out batteries should the camera drain them too quickly. Having said all of that, the camera I chose to be my beginner camera over two years ago that I still use to this day for professional shoots and checks off all those boxes of what I look for in a camera is none other than peeling off the tape because I was trying to save the reveal till now. The Canon 200D, also known as the Canon SL2. Now, depending on what country or region you're in, sometimes this will be called Canon 200D or Canon Rebel SL2. They are identical, so don't worry about the label. This, in my opinion, is the best budget-friendly beginner camera good enough for professional shoots. For the first year and a half in business, this is what I shot with this very camera. It has a maximum resolution of 1080p, at 60 frames per second, so you get full HD slow motion. It has Canon's blazing fast and accurate dual pixel autofocus on the touch screen. It has the flip out and articulating screen. All four, well, when I got this, I bought it off of eBay new for $500 flat. Now there is a Canon SL3 available that does shoot 4K, but there is a massive crop in 4K mode. So don't know if that's something you wanna deal with on already a cropped sensor. I'll have a link to this camera in the description below, so check that out if you want to. If you are brand new to cameras, I do have a video explaining camera basics, so click right here to check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.